Surprisingly enough, people have asked me to talk about uh, the settings in the NVIDIA control panel. So today I'm going to be going through every setting in the NVIDIA control panel and telling you guys my thoughts and what it means and what I use personally. I'll also quickly look at the GeForce experience and just tell you how I use it myself. Let's get on with it. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, ladies and gentlemen. This is Brian coming back to you guys today with a video explaining all the NVIDIA control settings in the panel and uh, what they do and what you should turn on and what you should turn off. So without further ado, let's get on with it and just right click on the desktop there. You can left click on the NVIDIA control panel, bring that up. And as you can see here, it's perfectly fitting the 1080p area that I've set out for it. So you guys will be able to see this in all its 1080p glory. So uh, it does take, a, for some odd reason, it is kind of laggy. So if that you know, if it feels laggy on your computer, don't be concerned. It's laggy on my computer. I'm telling you now, I've got no viruses on this thing. It runs perfectly fine. So uh, this is the adjust image settings with preview. This is the first panel here. And we can see here, all you want to do with this is just yeah, use advanced 3D image settings, right? Because if you're going to use applications and use particular settings in those applications and in the control panel, then you just want to use this setting and let, you know, the settings do this, the talking. <laughs> so basically, if you want, though, you can put it onto full quality. That's either of the two, but I just used custom settings on certain games. So I have this use advanced 3D image settings. So anyway, that being said, let's go down now to manage 3D settings. And now this is probably the most important part of this whole video as I guess this is where all the chunk of the questions that I got about the NVIDIA control panel come from. So ambient occlusion, this is essentially a very taxing setting that I've found with a lot of games. I like to leave it off, though if you have a beast set up, you can put it on quality or performance. It's up to you. I find just it just taxes your frame rates way too much, so I prefer to leave it off as it is. Uh, Anisiotropic uh, filtering, this is one that you know depends on the game but I usually like to set this to 16 times or 16 speed uh, you know and that's actually one setting that I do like to manually change to 16 speed because pretty much all my games look better with 16 speed now find for some reason it doesn't actually tax your graphics card too much this setting in a lot of games uh, anti-aliasing moving down here to FXAA this setting is just trash I hate it completely I think FXAA looks horrible even at 1080p or at 1440p I just don't like it at all for some reason it just makes my games look all like every game look horrible that I've tried it on I don't know why uh, anti-aliasing gamma correction that's up to you you can actually try and turn it off if you want to it's up to you I personally just leave it on so I just leave it on uh, you know that affects like the brightness of the actual anti-aliasing itself so I just leave it on it works I have no problems I've tried it on and off I haven't really noticed much of a difference uh, to be honest, uh, maybe if I'm playing an RPG and I'm really getting into it, I'd like to leave that off, but for whatever, it, for what it's worth, it's not a biggie, it doesn't affect your performance uh, in any way, all that I've benchmarked anyway. So, uh, anti-aliasing mode, uh, this one, we can just leave it on application controlled, because you've got your different uh, anti-aliasing modes in games. For instance, some games have MSAA, some games have SMAA. And me personally, I like to use both these forms of uh, anti-aliasing, though if they're not available in the game, for instance, World of Warcraft came out, I would like, you know, when when the Warlords of Draenor came out, didn't have both of these uh, anti-aliasing modes, so I just controlled it in the application. So it depends on the game, but for what it's worth, I'd leave that on application controlled. Next here, we've got anti-aliasing transparency. Just leave that to off. You don't want to play with that. Uh, CUDA cores on your GPU, yeah, you always want this on all, right, because you want... <laughs> your graphics card working to its full potential. Uh, DSR factors, this is actually a very, very interesting setting. And if you're on, for instance, a 27-inch 1080p monitor, I would actually recommend setting this to two. I'm actually on 1440p monitors at the moment, so I don't need to play around with this. Though I have tried it on a 1080p monitor, and it does make a 1080p monitor look better, in my opinion, at two, two times there. But it, it will tax your graphics card a lot. So keep that in mind, just for actual desktop editing and stuff, if you guys are editing videos, especially 1080p videos on a 1080p monitor, turning this on two, two times there, that'll just help you so much with your productivity. So this is why this is a really good thing. I recommend it. So I leave it off, as I said before, because I've got 1440p monitors, but if you're on a 1080p monitor, you might want to give this a shot, especially for productivity. 
uh, even go to 4K if you <laughs> if you dare do that. But anyway, next setting here, uh, maximum pre-rendered frames. So leave this to one. I honestly, I leave this to one. I hate input lag and I don't recommend turning this to any other setting. Though if you've got a really bad computer and you just want to enjoy your game somewhat, you may want to set this to four. Though for what it's worth, I always put this on one. As for instance, some games like Crisis 3, if I put this to four, man, can I feel the input lag. So that's uh, I definitely like that on one. Uh, Multi-frame MFAA. This is NVIDIA's new anti-aliasing technology. I personally haven't use this yet uh, I would like to get into it and benchmark it though the games that support it um, I don't know like I've actually got to look into this setting more apparently it's a better MSAA it's half as taxing though for what it's worth I don't have my MSAA turned up too high anyway I have it at either 2 speed or 4 speed most of the times at 1440p it's only at 2 speed anyhow so MFAA benefits for me aren't really that big so I haven't bothered playing with it yet admittedly uh, let's move down down now to multi-display mixed GPU acceleration here. So uh, since I do have two displays, I do have 1440, uh, two 1440p monitors, I like to leave this just on multi-display performance mode. Though for what it's worth, it doesn't make a difference really. Um, if you're on a single monitor, then just set it to single. If you're on t like multiple, then set it to multiple. Uh, and then power management mode, I'd leave this on adaptive. I don't recommend uh, putting it on maximum performance because your graphics card on idle will just chew more power. So it's actually, you know, in games, those games are going to be constantly processing frames. It's not a problem. It's, your GPU is not going to ramp down magically in games unless the game is really crap. So I'd just leave this on adaptive and get some power savings there. Um, especially like now I'm recording on the desktop, my graphics card isn't working so hard, so that's helping save some power. So I'd recommend leaving this on adaptive unless you've got some weird problems going on. And even if you do have weird problems, you might want to just reinstall your OS and fix those problems up. So shader case, leave this, don't touch this setting. Texture filtering, you can leave this as well. Uh, these settings, I generally don't play with them, uh, but if you want to, um, I'd leave that on clamp though. Uh, if you want to, you can change these settings, except for, I think it is, try linear optimization. Yeah, that's one that I actually do leave on. Um, it can help with certain games, but for whatever it's worth, these settings, you shouldn't really play it. Sorry, I shouldn't really play around with these settings here. Um, you know, they can mess up your games a little bit. Though, for what it's worth, just leave them how they are. Uh, threaded optimization, leave that on auto as well. Triple buffering, leave that off. Vertical sync, use the 3D application, though this is a very interesting setting because if you're on games like Skyrim, uh, then I would turn this off. And usually I do turn this off, I actually do. I don't know why I actually recently, actually that's why. I recently updated my drivers um, and so it had vSync on. So that's that I'll turn that off there and so once you're done there you can press apply also virtually uh, virtual reality pre-rendered frames that's just a setting for VR headsets it has no bearing for your 2d experience so don't worry about that um, I just leave that for one for what it's worth anyway so let's move on now to configure surround so this is Nvidia surround you can see here I'm using both my DVI ports it's just giving you all your ed uh, settings there you've also got your physics uh, settings there if you want to use a GPU to process physics or your CPU. I just leave it on auto, it does a fine job. And then you can span displays with surround. So you got some interesting settings there. I like it how it tells you all your, the information you need to know there. Uh, moving on now to change resolution, another very interesting setting here. So you can see here I've got a custom refresh rate here, 63 hertz. More hertz, the better. That's generally how it is in the PC gaming world. Uh, so my monitors, I one of them can go to, this one here can actually go to 67, but I run them both at 63 hertz for what it's worth. Uh, since this one's my main gaming one with better blacks, I have that to 63 hertz as well. So if you want to make a custom resolution to overclock your monitor, but keep in mind you can only overclock monitors that have no built-in scalar. Uh, in other words, the, the, gra the graphics processor is... Um, directly connecting to the monitor and pushing out the frames. It's not going through any uh, scalar there. So if you've got a graphics card like mine, say for instance, I mean, sorry, if you've got a monitor like mine, a Korean monitor, then you can just go to customize here and then you can set up a custom resolution there. So you can see here I've actually set up and you can overclock your monitor, say 63 hertz, and then you go to CVT reduced blank. I find that can help you get a few more frames out of your monitor depending on 
few more uh, cycles out of your monitor depending on what monitor it is. So see if it's your reduced blank and then you can go as high as you can on the particular monitor. As I said before, um, mine can only go to 63 hertz so then I set both of them to 63 hertz. So it's really cool you can overclock your monitors there. If you guys want me to do an overclocking tutorial <laughs> for monitors I can do that but I pretty much explain just explain the gist of it there so it's very easy to do. Uh, next setting here is adjust desktop color, uh, color settings. This is if you want to yeah make your desktop look crazy. I mean I generally I mean you can actually do some creative things to it. Uh, for instance make your screen um, actually this is not the monitor that see I gotta set this monitor this is the monitor I'm recording off so if I do that I can make it gray um, I can over saturate everything which just looks stupid but I just leave that on default though you can be creative with that same with the hue settings there um, but yeah uh, these for some reason these settings just don't work like if I go use Nvidia settings here and I change this it just reverts back so <laughs> you know that's that's pretty interesting. I think it's because I got Flux on, so that's probably why. But other applications control color settings, so uh, I think that just explains how Flux works. I mean, you can technically have Flux uh, from this panel if you don't want to use a program. But anyway, that being said, let's move down now to Rotate Display here. So uh, we've got here uh, Choose Your Landscape Orientations here. Uh, if you want to have Portrait, if you want to have Landscape Flipped, I don't know. I've never used Flip before. <laughs> But, you know, portrait's definitely a, a good setting there if you want to have your monitors standing up vertically. So you can do that on both monitors. You've got a lot to choose from here. Now, view HD CP. This is basically high digital content protection. Some, you know, see if you get rent a DVD, sometimes it requires a monitor to be compatible with that. Now, both my graphics card and my monitor are compatible. So this will just tell you the status of both these monitors and if they can support this mode, which both of them do. Uh, moving down now to set up digital audio. Don't know why it's trying. I didn't. They didn't think I changed anything there. Why is it asking me to change stuff? But anyway, set up digital audio there. Um, whoa, the colors just went crazy. What the? You guys are seeing some live stuff here. Flux just, Flux just had a. Oh, there we go. What? What? Why was that on 18? I don't know. Anyway, that's weird. I'm gonna apply that, <laughs> and leave that as it is. So that's weird. That was really weird. Anyway, let's keep moving on. So set up digital audio. Basically, this is the if you're running a display port or if you're running a HDMI cable, you can run audio over that cable to a DAC amp or whatever. Um, this is where you can set it up here for surround surround and whatnot. Um, I'm not using it at the moment, but if you are, you can definitely take advantage of the, that panel there. Uh, adjust desktop size and position. Now, this is an actually another interesting setting, especially if you're over a VGA port. Though, personally, I just use no scaling on both of these. Though, if you're running at your native resolution, which I am now, it doesn't make a difference. And I've actually tested this for input lag. It doesn't make one bit of a difference. So, But for what it's worth, you can just leave it at no scaling, because when even when I get my monitor for a game that scales down to 1080p for my benchmarking, I use no scaling, so in other words, it'll just shrink the whole thing so it still looks good to my eyes. So I like that. Um, I like leaving it on no scaling, actually, because it looks better, in my opinion, as well, instead of stretching out the 1080p picture to a 1440p picture. Anyway, let's move on now to set up multiple displays here. So this is a really good control panel. This is why I do like NVIDIA's control panel, because, again, you can just select which one's your primary and which one's your secondary, and you can switch those monitors around. You know, you can do whatever you want, so it's really cool. I really like this. You can set up your monitors the way you want them. Um, me personally, that's how I had it before. So when I'm switching over to my different monitors, I like that. This is my primary, even though it's number two. Um, this is number one here, which has all my software and stuff on it. So, And I play games on number two, which is my primary. So uh, that's how I have that set up. And you can definitely set up multiple displays very easy with this control panel. Anyway, that being said, let's move on now to the next setting here. So I don't know, again, I'm just going to say no because it was set up the way I liked it before. But uh, video, adjust video color settings. So this is, again, if you're using like VLC Media Player or something like that, you know, it can have uh, options there to code from the graphics card. And so uh, you can use NVIDIA settings here or you can just use the video player settings. But for what it's worth, my monitors are already calibrated, so I don't need to play with these settings. If you're on, say, for instance, a really... For instance, a dying CRT and you want to watch movies, then you can just smash the brightness, you know, while you're watching movies and you'll be able to see those movies perfect, 
reasonably okay still. So um, same with this, you know, just your other settings here. So yeah, there's nothing. I don't really touch these settings again because movies already look gorgeous on my uh, video player on the on my monitors. So that's it for the actual NVIDIA control panel. Now we'll actually hop across now to uh, the uh, NVIDIA GeForce Experience. So again, you can see here it's a little bit laggy this thing, but we'll open up the GeForce Experience. So let's move on now to the GeForce Experience, and oddly enough, I had to cut my Camtasia Studio desktop recording software because I had to turn off Shadow Play. Uh, there was some weird problem where I actually couldn't record this uh, panel here with Shadow Play on as it conflicted with my Camtasia Studio 8 recording software. So anyway, now that that that's turned off, I can record properly. And for some odd reason, when I record in uh, microphone audio into Shadow Play, it just comes out really bad. So I have to use my Camtasia Studio 8 to record it. Uh, so anyway, for games, what we've got here with GeForce Experience is what you can have this panel do is scan your games and then recommend settings for you. Uh, graphic settings. So this is great if you've got low-end PC, a mid-end PC, or even a high-end PC. Uh, though personally, I do like to tweak the games for how I visually experience them. Uh, and so it does usually differ from what these settings recommend. I have tried this in the past, and I do like to change certain things around to give me a better experience. Generally, <laughs> pretty much every game. So uh, though it is useful for you, and it does actually do a pretty good job of recommending settings. So that's something you might want to check out if you are... Uh, beginner on the PC. But anyway, moving on now to drivers here. We have uh, check for updates, which you can just check for updates manually. I like to do that once a month or when a game has been released. Uh, as you can see here, my driver is up to date to the latest driver. I generally haven't had any problems with NVIDIA drivers ever since I got my GDX 670, though. I hear that some people do have drivers, so driver problems and they have to revert back to older drivers so you can do that by downloading drivers from their website anyway onto my rig here so there's my alias for my computer stationary e it was an, a name that I've had ever since I started PC gaming so that's something you probably didn't know about me uh, but anyway GPU GDX 970 uh, overclocked to 1600 megahertz we got the CPU overclocked to 4.2 gigahertz so oddly enough it doesn't display overclocks properly here I guess it's just pulling that from system information and putting a black background on it same with the custom resolution uh, which is not showing there uh, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 as well and the drive version and Windows 8.1 Pro so you've got some more settings down here as well so sort of like a control panel down here which is kind of up here anyway uh, moving on now to shield uh, if you've got one of those devices the glorious shield I don't have one I don't need one um, then you can use play around with the settings here. Uh, moving on now to preferences, you've got shadow play here, and it's currently it's turned off. Current, so currently it's turned off for me, and I usually have it turned on, and I usually have it. I uh, will go over to games. Sorry, so uh, usually have it hot keyed to F8. So we'll quickly go down to shadow play here and go over the settings I use. I allow desktop capture usually. I usually turn camera off in this, um, and so. Uh, it's usually, yeah, I can't actually turn it on because I'm recording at the moment, unfortunately, with a different program. Uh, though here's your games, you can do the same as you did here. You can scan for them and change the preferences here. As I've turned this off, as I've said before, I don't use this panel. And just in general here, I've got English United Kingdom and automatically download drivers. All that stuff's checked off, as I don't like anything running in the background. Uh, that's how it's always been since I started using a PC in general. Uh, so, uh, game stream. This is another setting here if you've got a game stream device. So, that about wraps it up for the NVIDIA GeForce experience. Let's quickly move on now to a conclusion for you guys. So anyway, that's about it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please drop a big fat like on that like button. And also, if you have any questions or comments about the settings discussed today as well, then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for the latest tech, juicy news and views and views. <laughs> that, didn't, that didn't make any sense. Anyway, you can also check me out on Twitter for the latest news if you want to. And also, if you want to support the channel and keep it uh, sponsor-free, then be sure to check me out on Patreon. Every dollar helps to keep the honest news and reviews coming to you guys. Anyway, guys, peace out for now. Bye.